all systems go. Clear for liftoff. What's up, everyone? Tyler Tambaline here, a.k.a. Toe Tag and Tambo, back for the first major of the season. It's Masters Week here. We're going to have the first look. I know pricing already came out, so it won't be as much of a surprise, at least as some of the other stuff. Not saying we fully cheated, but obviously a lot of work going in this morning. We're going to show it off on the site. Huge week for the Ship and Asia community. It was awesome. We had Batia, Akshay Batia. And he said, by the way, in an interview on the PGA thing last night, he said Akshay Bati here. I'd never heard that before, but mm -hmm. maybe he was just little flustered after the win but either way number one in our course fit rankings over at shipitnation.com got the job done we welcome everybody into the show today here go collect was first in jordan a close second go collect again and then jordan says cheater you can't go twice so a lot of cheating talk here we'll get to it but hoopster bring you in man the masters is here we're excited to break it all down I'm gonna go through everything top down there's 89 guys in the field now i believe with um akshay getting in yesterday but it was an awesome week if you watched it yesterday, the members crushed and just watching the event, Denny come back, him getting the win, uh, Akshay getting the win in um, the playoff. But how was your week? What, what's going on, man? How you doing? Yeah, it was a uh, yeah, solid week. And yeah, in terms of content, I mean, we had Batia as our, our number one course fit, which is always good. Our guy Lee does a phenomenal job. I mean, uh, just fits everything that we're doing over here uh, at, at Ship and Nation. Gets his content up earlier than anyone in the industry. You can see we already have the, the uh, course fit rankings up. He's already got his tiers in there. Lee's the man, does a hell of a job, and it's a nice start to the week to look at his stuff because it gets up nice and early. You're able to get in there. Some of it's free as well, which we always talk about. So um, in terms of the Masters, I mean, a, a tradition like uh, like no other, like they say, and it's a, it's a fun week, man. It is very, very fun. Um, the field's obviously loaded, first major of the year, a lot of excitement around it. And then in terms of DFS offerings, uh, three milli makers. So, uh, you know, got the $10, got the $100, which I love. And then the uh, 2222, the, the $2,222 Millie Maker as well. So the contests are massive. It's fun. The coverage is great. Looking forward to it. It's a fun week to do content as, as well, which, uh, you know, all kind of kicks off right here for us at, uh, at Ship It Nation. So very, very excited for the Masters. We'll have you covered for sure. Uh, everything you need, you know, to, to be live to ship on, on Sunday at uh, um, a fraction of the price compared to our competitor is very affordable pricing. That's what we pride ourselves on. And um, we've, we stuck with it and we will continue to stick with it uh, moving forward. So if you're looking for content for the masters, this is your spot. We've got everything you need uh, to have success this week. Yeah. No complaint about marketing. The M and masters, by the way, does stand for marketing. It's going to be a big week. It's the biggest week to kick things off for PGA throughout, but we've obviously made ourselves a name for the PGA content. You guys, you know, hoop just talked about it. very affordable, half the price of our competitors will have the projections and ownership. We'll get all the housekeeping out of the way right now for the main slate, round one, and through round four for showdown. So you get five big time slates. And you guys know those showdown contests, at least two through four are very big during the Masters, oftentimes 100K up top. You see the logos. If you haven't, go to Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, at Ship It Nation. Go see the thread from yesterday. It's a big showdown week. There was NASCAR winners, NASCAR included in our all access package. But just to break it down, showdown, we'll have the stone. We'll have the slate plan up with the core report, the tier rankings, everything, how we're handling it. The main stone for the, the big time classic slate that we just talked about. Who mentioned? I have one. I got Hebrew Cheetah, by the way. Shout out to him. Just on absolute heater, crushing everything. I don't even know if you call it a heater anymore. But uh, I said, Rio, you can't spell Rio without ROI. The guy's just putting in a little bit here and shipping out everything on the other side. He's got four of those mega 22-22 tickets this week. So I'm excited for him, a lot of members with tickets out there that have won them through the satellites along the way. And then I got one in there, Hoop. So I'm going to be in the 22-22 this week. Got one. I'll play the $100 some, and then I'll get into the $10 just because. But all our other content, just so you guys know, will be going up. A course fit rankings, as we showed off, had Akshay in there last week as number one. They were updated this afternoon. We're always on top of that stuff. Lee's value report is completely free. So if you haven't been to the site yet and you want to just go check it out, go to shipitnation.com, PGA. Drop down to the value port. We'll show it all off here just because you guys can do it for time. But you can see it here and get in. You can use Lee 15 
to get all his extra stuff. You can use Hoop15 if you guys want to get in on the action. We've got that code. That can cover you for all access or PGA-only memberships. This is not a first-time payment savings. This is a locked-in price savings, so when you get it. But we moved the colors over a little bit and had some fun with that. If you guys do want to go to it, go to the site. Go to Join the Nation. The all-access option, 69 a month, will drop to 58 This annual, though, one piece of the housekeeping will go away. Hoop and I talked about it. April 30th. This goes to $6.99 and this goes to $3.89. That's where it'll stop. And we'll still have codes and discounts. But to get $5.09 for all of the major sports is definitely the best deal across the entire industry. So I got to tell you guys that. I'll click over here. A couple more housekeeping pieces. Quick hoop. Um, the Lister League. People ask about this all the time. Mayo is with Underdog now. There is no DraftKings Mayo Lister League. Fantasy Golf Degenerates is with Underdog now. There is no DraftKings Lister League for that. So the Ship It Nation Lister League will be 1,000 people. This week, very balanced structure, 750 bucks up top, 75 bucks for 10th, $10 for a min cash, pretty even dispersion across the board. That will be posted on our Twitter, X at Ship It Nation, Toe Tag and Tambo. You guys can check that out. And then speaking of Toe Tag and Tambo, my own personal giveaways I always like to do. So the tidbits this week, when they come out, giving away five $100 Millimaker tickets. So $500 total up to, if it gets 500 reposts, and I'm going to give them away. I'm going to keep an eye on it this week because a little bit, you know, in between the first 100, I'll pick a winner. After 200 hits, I'm going to go back and find a winner. The third, 300, I'm going to go find a winner. So the faster you repost it and get it out there, the more likely it is you're going to get in on the action. So giving away up to $500 Millimaker winners with the tidbits this week. I don't think there was anything else here, Hoop. Um, I'll be back to the mail show in his studio this week tomorrow. That show is going to come out a little bit early. And then Hoop and I will be back, as always, on Wednesday with our updated. And we'll have updates. We'll have everything up on the site, the projections, the stone, the ownership, the initial, all, all of those things that we're doing. Anything that I missed, Hoop, here? We got it within seven minutes, yeah. baby. Still make good time. I'm just going, just going to add one little thing that I was kind of you know thinking about this morning that I'm going to do for our uh, for our members this week. We always, I always put out my player pool. It's my top. It depends on the field, you know, 25 to 35 guys that I'm playing, guys that I have significant uh, ownership on uh, will be listed. And it's typically my, my highest owned guys. What I'm going to do this week, uh, specific just for the Masters, because if you are a member, you know, in the exposure pool, I put a range, usually, you know, 22 to 30 percent or 15 to, you know, 22 percent, just a range where I'm playing these guys, because some of it fluctuates a little bit. What I'm going to do this week for our members for the $10 Millimaker, obviously I'm max maxing it out. In the exposure column, I'm going to put my exact exposure. So it's not going to be a range. It's going to be exactly what I'm playing in that contest so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm doing. The reason I do the ranges typically because I play a lot of different contests. So in one contest, I might have a guy 15%. In the other one, I might have a 20 So I kind of give you a range of where my guys are across the entire landscape of my portfolio. This week, I'm going to give you the exact percentages in there for that $10 Millimaker exact percentages that I'm playing of each specific guy. Yeah. And then real quick, while you did that, like just to break it down, we talked about hoop 15. Still got to round up my 10 minutes. Of course, join dash PGA. If you want just the golf stuff, go there dollar a day. It works out to 33 bucks basically. So it's just around a dollar a day. If you're doing it for the annual, again, that's the best spot to get in at. That works out to about $5 per event, just over 20 bucks a month for all of that stuff. We just talked about it works out to about a dollar a slate on a standard four week month. And we're talking about that includes the Masters, the RBC Heritage the week after, all those other events leading up to the PGA Championship. Here it is. We had Akshay as our number one course fit rankings last week. Shout out to our some of our members. LJ O'Coin, 7500 bucks first. Love to see that. Busting in over some other logos over there. G-Dub 43, 362 bucks into 7469 I can promise you with these ones, it doesn't matter your bankroll or what you're playing. Louis Zach, 286 into 7327 he went off 2012 champ, won about six grand. We had 84 to 539, 42 to 860. You can go check all these out. Many more in the Discord, 145 into 1250. It does not matter your bankroll, hoop, anything else to add. If not, let's talk about the Masters, man. How excited are you for the first major of the season? And then with the peaking and the cheating and the extras we talked about, someone said, uh, Someone said, we're talking cheating. It must be Patrick Reed week. Yeah, he does pretty well <laughs> at this course, matter of fact, and has a green jacket of his own. But they did not bring the 5K price range into this one, of course, even though, um, you know, it's a strong field with, with Scheffler, all that. It's just, it's a limited field as is, right? So they just sort of did the same thing. 
But then, um, you know, the 7K range went to about 20 guys, and then everyone got dumped in the sixes down below. But what's your thoughts on the Masters' first thoughts leading in? In terms of price, I mean, I think this is the standard we're going to see now in these smaller field events. They're not going to go down to the 5K range. They're going to, you know, put the the floor price at, at six. And these larger field events, they're definitely willing to go into the 5K range and then just <laughs> dump everyone everyone in there. And, you know, we, we talked about it. We're proponents of the 5K range, but when they dump such a large majority of the field into that range, kind of takes away the, the allure of it, especially in weaker field or you know, those weaker field events where you might not have the, the top end guys to pay for. So this is kind of what we thought we'd have here, the 6K range all the way up to Scheffler. And yeah, it, we definitely broke the rules this week. Not going to lie. Like this is not the first time we've looked at the the pricing. I mean, it, it's the Masters. It's been out for a while. Um, kind of have a feel where everyone's at. And, you know, this will be a, a first look plus because I think you're going to get some additional information on this show, not just a first look raw conversation. We're going to be able to talk a little more roster construction on this show, a little more, you know, build types. There's already a couple questions in the chat. It's been popular, uh, balance build, stars and scrubs might be popular. We have a little more information on that today. So we'll be able to, to talk about that a little more in depth. But, um, you know, usually there's like outlier prices because of the stuff coming out so early. I haven't seen that, to be honest with you. I mean, there's a couple price tags that, that stand out, guys. I think we'll get ownership based on that. But it's kind of kind of one of those uh, pricing structures where, you know, it, you know, they are who we thought they are. Like, I, this is kind of what I expected um, coming into it. A tradition unlike any other. Yeah, as Rick I said Roll no. Knows. Yeah. 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 Who, who could <laughs> roll it off the tongue there, Rick Roll? So it's yeah, okay. You hooked yeah. them up. Andrew, of course, always teasers. We said it. There's going to be news comes out this week for sure. I think it'll be Thursday. And then more probably leading up to the the one month away from our one-year anniversary is going to be some big news. So just keep that in mind. Definitely appreciate you guys sticking with us, having that patience. I like Sean's ideas for the week. Tambo taking down that Millie. I, I like that call. Don't care which one. It's always a dream, though, like just to take that thing down. So I would love to see that. Shout out to our guy Juice back in the mix. If you remember, Juice turning that eight bucks into 80 K that week with this Tennessee Titans back during NFL did some amazing giveaways. Yeah. Shout out to CG DFS. A lot of cheat. There it was. Andrew had it about the Patrick Reed thing. And then I do think it is interesting here. You just talked about, it's more of a first thoughts than a first look. That's a good way to put it. We're going to give our first thoughts, how we're seeing it. And some of these questions you guys brought up and I liked AK Jeff said, what do you think will be more popular when I was looking at it originally as easy as it was to still build a Scotty Scheffler lineup. I get it. But I do think it got a little bit easier. And again, because it's first thoughts, I don't mind doing this. But like now this has to be a popular start. You just saw what Denny did yesterday. I know a lot of people will say that won't get too much steam. It's not that he's going to, I think he's going to be extremely high owned, a guy like Denny. But it's definitely a lot, feels a lot better to people and becomes a lot more viable when people say, hey, the guy was literally in the playoff last week. That's fine. And he's $1,000 less then the winner, the eventual winner of the tournament yesterday with Akshay getting added in here at 7,200. So just to show it, I mean, you still have 7,900. That gets you a bunch of different ways you can go. We'll talk when we go through the ranges, what you got, what you like um, a, a little bit more than others. So we'll talk about that. And I know Willie Z and Tiger were out there for a round. I said, you know, stay tuned for that. We've got some content up. You can check it out. But um, interesting to say what we do with Tiger. People said that would really fit Really fix golf, Hoop. If we could just get, uh, yeah, if we could just sure get would. Tiger into the mix again, give him another major. What do you think? I got a uh, breaking news for you. It ain't happening. <laughs> At least this week, it's definitely not happening. Like, oh, I don't, what's his price? I haven't even seen him in there. Free sixty. Yeah, free sixty-eight. Yeah. You no. don't think that's a disrespectful price tag for Tiger? No, it's disrespectful in the wrong way. It should be much lower. He should be wow. in that. The, Who in wants that, to in get that clipped? Circuit. Who wants yeah, to get clipped no, for later in the week? It Man. ain't happening. I will. I feel very confident there's no clip coming from this one. I promise you that. One interesting dynamic, though, that our guy Bart brought up is how the live guys factor into the equation this week. And I think that it's I think it's a, a very important talking point because I think there's two ways to, to look at it. Like people kind of forgotten about them and, and you know, they're going to go a little overlooked. Or are people going to be excited that we have some new guys to click and they're going to want to click their names? I mean, I think it's definitely an interesting talk point. We'll definitely discuss it as we go through some of these guys. But, you know, my lean is I think people might be excited to click their names. Or you could. Tiger Woods, yeah. Let's use uh, let's use Bart's question. I like that to kick this thing off. Let's go into this upper range because I am interested to get your take. It's hard to really peg what's going to happen with Brooks Kepka. I don't think anyone's looking. I, you know, I'll throw a, a tweet out there later or something, a little joke around the Live Golf Miami stuff. He obviously had a bad week 
over there. And I don't think anyone gives a shit, nor does Brooks, right? He's here to win these majors. We know that it's happened in the past second year. Last year, he let Cantlay slow him down a little bit. Cantlay was in the group in front of him. He sort of blamed that and everyone else saw it on his face. He said that he made some mistakes. He learned from it and then went back and won the PGA championship after coming second at the Masters. By the way, Phil Mickelson came second at the Masters as well, tied with Brooks. John Rahm now on live won. And I believe it was Patrick Reed who was up there as well. Another, so it was like four of the top five were live guys. But I know Scotty's up here, big talking point. I understand Rom Rory, but two of the live guys who Rom and Brooks. Let's start with those two guys to answer Bart's question. Then we'll attack the other guys sort of as we go throughout. Good way, bad way. We'll we'll attack the conversation. I should say we won't we won't come after them. We're not the the live haters here. But go ahead. Let's talk about this upper range. Rom Brooks and the rest of the top. Man, I just had to double check. I, you said Phil was tied for second. I thought that was a uh, – I thought you misspoke. But, man, he did get up there. I totally forgot about that last year. That's crazy. Last year, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is crazy. Good for him. Uh, in terms of this top two, yeah, it, it you know sparks that conversation right out of the gate in terms of the, the live guys and what's going to happen here because you have two out of the four highest-priced guys in this field essentially live guys, you know, Kepka and, and John Rahm. I mean, the big talking point is going to be – Scotty Scheffler and and what do people do with Scotty Scheffler? We're now accustomed to paying probably almost thirteen thousand for Scotty Scheffler, the best golfer in the world, and I think it, it's now to a point where there's a gap between him and whoever you think is number two. For me, it's you know probably John Rahm, but there's there's a gap in, in how I view these two. I mean, Scotty Scheffler is is number one by a wide margin. Twelve one is much too cheap, and like you guys kind of displayed when we started, it's going to be easy to play him. I mean, you play Scotty. And then you have – there's guys down in the six, too, like you talked about. You use Denny McCarthy as an example. I think that's a great guy to use because, you know, based on his performance last week, people are going to want to go right to him. Um, you just – I just can't imagine playing DFS this week and saying my stand is going to be that I'm fading Scotty Scheffler. I know people will do it. I know there's game theory behind it. Um, I just can't bring myself to do it. I mean, just have to imagine – some way, shape, or form, this guy's in the conversation going into Sunday as well as he's playing. Everything at this course sets up well for him. Like, I just, man, Scotty Shuffler is is the, the alpha in this group. John Rom behind him, you got a $900 discount. I'm a John Rom guy. I know you are too. Want to play definitely some, some John Rom. After Rom, it, it gets interesting for me because, you know, Rory McIlroy, I, I think, is a, a step below those two. I, you know, I think it's, Scheffler, big drop, John Rahm, and then a big drop to whoever you think the third best guy in, is in this field. I don't even think it is necessarily Rory, to be honest with you. But based on the, the third place finish last week, again, typical Rory fashion. I mean, typical Rory fashion, not in contention, no chance of winning. I think it was the most – he was in the, the round four core for me. It was just so obvious that Rory was going to play well on Sunday. He had no chance of winning. That's the time when he plays his best. Round one, maybe he gets off to a hot start. You know, round two, he kind of tanks it, whatever it may be. This guy only plays well when he's out of contention. He was out of contention, shot up the leaderboard. I hope it increases ownership. I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing with Rory that yet this week. I'll be honest. It's early. It's Monday. Um, but, man, like these late pushes out of contention, just so obvious for him. Um, then, then you have Brooks at 10-2, and I feel like with, with Brooks – you're either a Brooks guy or you're not. You either play him or you don't in these spots because he has not necessarily been playing well. He's got the 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 big game hunter tag on him. Everyone thinks he shows up for these big events, and he has in the past, and he's not phased by the, the majors and, and whatnot, but he has not been playing well. Um, the price is big. I mean, you're paying, paying a premium 10-2. Um, and then after him, you have Wyndham Clark, who I think goes really overlooked in this field, first time playing here, five-figure price tag. Um, you know, he's, he's going to be very low owned. I'd imagine I haven't looked at ownership at all. This is just like my thoughts. Uh, I think he, he's very, very low owned in this, uh, upper 10 K range, but uh, definitely a lot to discuss up here. Yeah. First thoughts for me was like that. Obviously we know what Scotty, one thing is that Scotty's going to be held in check at least to a point because it's not going to get out of hand, like a 50%. This isn't the tournament where he's three to one and the field's terrible. This is a tournament where it's all, again, it's what are other people doing around him? There's, there's ROM people. There's Rory people. There's definitely Brooks people. And then there's everybody hates Wyndham. So that's kind of how the top works out. And whatever that means, if it's 28 to 35, I don't know what you're going to put Scotty in because he's going to pop way more than these guys. And the gap is not enough. It's only 900 bucks. So he is going to easily be able to get in there. There's still 7,600 left. 
I showed you earlier, like the bottom of the list, there's just tons of guys that you can make a case for. And even if you don't like the six Ks, go to here with Siwoo, Scott, Akshay, Henley, Rose. Who else do people like? Reed's record here is solid. Connor's a great record here. I mean, this is, people can literally just fill this thing out however they want. So it's very easy to get Scotty lineups. Now, the pivot is the other guys around him. Rom, whatever. You you mentioned with Rory, you know, he was no good. Everyone's a oh, third now. It's a 66 in round four when he's whatever it was, six, seven, eight strokes back to start the day, gets into a third place where first and second are separated by like seven strokes. So just is what it is. Obviously, Rory's got the, the spot here for the career Grand Slam. We talk about it every year. His history is insane. All those top tens, a 21st and a couple missed cuts in, but two of the last three years, missed cuts. So it is interesting to see how the Rory ownership goes. Um, and then it, I just don't see how Clark gets any ownership because even the people that are off Brooks, uh, you know, there's other people that are on him. I don't think we'll see as much. And then to try and put like, I guess a, a tournament spin on it, like these two, this is 7450. If you could get behind, you know, big game hunters, Brooks Kepka, and then the new age version lately, like the US Open style guys. Brooks is the PGA and the US Open. Clark was second at the API, second at the players. He's basically uh, you know, right behind what Scotty's been doing, but for the real discount versus Rom's 900 bucks because he's John Rom and I was like Rom. But just to note that this would be sort of the tournament spin, I guess, hoop because you put two of these guys in, you have 7450. You don't have Scotty, but you have almost the same money left and only need to fill it out with four golfers versus an extra punt. And that's if you put Brooks and Wyndham much higher than some of these guys. And so it'll depend on how you feel about that 7K range. But any other thoughts? up top when it comes to that or some of that yeah. roster construction stuff. Just, just out of curiosity, a question, um, and I know my answer, but if you had to choose one between Brooks and, and Wyndham, where are you going on Monday of the Masters? <laughs> ah, man. I really struggle with Wyndham, even though he's been better and is better and whatever, I would probably still go Brooks. Yeah, I, I'm going Wyndham, so we're opposite on that. But I think it's interesting because, yeah, those clearly will be the lowest owned guys. Like, I mean, Scotty's going to be one, Rom's going to be two. I think Rory is clearly going to be the third highest owned. Um, and then those two have a chance to go a little overlooked. But I do think I mean, I, there should be a pretty big gap in ownership between Brooks and Wyndham. I think more people do go to, to Brooks. Wyndham, I think, has a chance to come in really low on because of the guys that we're about to talk about in the 9K range, which are uh, super appealing options as well. Yeah, one of the things about Brooks, and then we'll go into this 9K range for sure, is just about the, again, it's whatever you want to play it. I, having Alex Blickle on the other week was awesome just to get a sort of a mentality factor thing and talk through it. It is insane i mean obviously the you, you have to sort of be good what, what do they say rather be good than lucky because you put yourself in the position to get it that way so he's good we know that brooks put himself in the position other people sort of cracked and failed and he came through multiple times five major winner already but i will say this the conversation last week came up i think it was like rory talking about scotty and scotty talking about it with his caddy and it kind of sort of mentioned out there of how they just don't really make mistakes. They know when to go for it. They know when not. They know when you just got to eat, you know, take your medicine, play it for the par. And if you get lucky and make a birdie, great, so on and so forth. Brooks has been very good at that. That's what majors are, right? Tiger talked about it the year he won it back in 2019. We had the Tiger talk there. And Jack Nicholas, when he went on, I remember the call. Barbara flipped the call over to Jack and Jack's talking to Tiger or, or to the broadcast about Tiger saying he knew the secret. On 17, when everybody was going in, or, or sorry, 12, on 12, when everybody was going into the water, Poulter, Finau, I think it was Cantlay, a couple others, you don't go for it. You go for the middle of the green and you make par on that hole and you move on. Everybody went for it because they just didn't know what to do. They hadn't been in the position, not enough experience, the pressure, the six holes left, it gets in your mind. Brooks has the ability to do it. If you remember, even that year, I think it was, was Brooks's tee shot. That's what I think was on 17. He got his tee shot off even with the Tiger roar in the back end and said, whatever, man, I'm still coming. I'm still trying to get this thing done. And so I just, it's not that I fully buy into the Brooks at majors as much as there is a certain mentality and this field's already shrunk down. I think he's really honed that in. And then the ability last year to go from second and sort of what was a letdown for him at the Masters to then go in and get the job done. The next one at the PGA Championship, uh, you know, got to have some thoughts for Brooks. Shout out to our guy, Degenerate75 here in the chat. James, my man, I know today's a big day for you. James is, has mentioned on Twitter, he's going through some stuff, but everybody's singing about you, praying about you, my man. Definitely looking out for you. Glad to see you in here, spending some of your time with us, but uh, we'll be in touch. I was just chatting with James this morning in great spirits. Obviously, you see it there again. Happy to have you here, my friend. 
joining us for the show. Hoop, any follow-up thoughts on the Brooks Kepka talk? If not, we can go to uh, Xander, who just absolutely dominates these majors, all the way down to Hideki Matsuyama. Injured last week, was he ever, right? Comes in, my dad's pissed. Took him out of the one and done. Hideki comes through and just crushes. But uh, anything on Brooks there? If not, let's take us into this nine game. Yeah, yeah I, I like how you find the little Hideki uh, nugget right before a lock yesterday or last week. Uh, what was it, the uh, Japanese Yahoo version or something? <laughs> it was. It's every week, and he's playing the best golf he's ever played. We'll start at the top though with uh, with Xander, who uh, continues to turn out very strong finishes. Um, is you know, was it three top tens in his last four? It's not loading up for me. Um, he was. Uh, fifth at the Valspar, second at the players, uh, fourth at the the Genesis, you know, two out of three of those very strong fields. Um, man, something early in the week just tells me, like, if it's not Scotty, I think it might be Xander. I don't know what. Just something tells me that it could be Xander this week. Uh, you know, initial thoughts, he's going to be a big part of what I do. And it can change. Obviously, it's Monday afternoon. We're not locked until Thursday early in the morning. But Something tells me Xander's going to be in the conversation this week when it comes to when it comes Sunday. Uh, Neiman playing phenomenally well uh, on the Live Tour has won a couple times there. A lot of top ten finishes. Uh, people will be excited, I think, to click his name. Um, you know, the next two guys a little bit shaky form recently. Hovland and Cantlay. Uh, initial thoughts: I think Hovland probably comes in pretty low owned. I think people are probably getting sick of uh, paying a big boy price tag for him without any results. I mean. 62nd at the the players, 36 at the Arnold Palmer, 19th at the Genesis, 58th at the AT and T. He's had a really bad year, a really disappointing year. Has kind of regressed. Now the opposite side of that is it, it's going to come with probably lower ownership because everyone's going to see those results. So he'll be a low owned option here. I think Patrick Cantlay has a chance to maybe go a little overlooked for the same reason, but to a little less of a degree. Not playing the greatest. Um, but the price is a little lower than we typically see the 9,400. He was 68th at the players, 36 at the Arnold Palmer. Um, you know, best finish this year was uh, fourth at the Genesis, but a lot of 50, 60 place finishes. People are not going to be excited about that. Spieth, everyone plays Spieth at Augusta. His results here have been phenomenal. Um, the price is, is in check. Willie Z is definitely getting ownership at 92. Um, has kind of turned it around. Um, what turned it around a little bit earlier on the last two results haven't been great. The, the cut at the players uh, 74th at the uh, Houston open, but I think people do go back to him. They like him in these sort of events. Um, Obear, if you've been playing him, I think you just stick with him. He's a guy in my eyes that can have success anywhere. I don't care if he hasn't played at the course. I, it, that none of that shit matters to me with this guy. I think he's the real deal. 9,100, I think is fair. And then Hideki playing probably the best golf we've seen in the last, I don't know, what would you say, like three years or so. I mean, he's just on a heater here. One at the Genesis, 12th at the Arnold Palmer, six at the Players, and then was right up there last week at, at Valero as well. 9K is a very appealing price tag. I have to imagine, you know, this is first first look type stuff, but I have to imagine he he's one of the higher owned guys in this field. Um, based on his recent results, his success at this course as well. Uh, the 9K Hideki price tag, I think, is going to stand out to a lot of people. But it's a loaded range. I mean, it is a very loaded range. Um, if you're not playing Scheffler, Rom, Rory, you have a chance to, well, you can probably play three of these guys as you go to the end, bottom of the range. If you, I just plugged in Ober, Zalatoris, Spieth, you still have $7,500 left per spot. So this is a spot where a lot of people can start with three guys and feel very, very comfortable with their team. So uh, strong range for sure. Yeah, and that's what I was saying earlier too. Going to be some good comments coming up here in a second. But just to note the um, stuff earlier from the Stars and Scrubs and the Balanced, Scotty was always going to be in play, and we know that. I wasn't trying to say that wasn't going to be a thing. Like I said, I put him right now like 28 to 35, and we'll see where it comes down or goes from there. But when you get guys like Denny McCarthy, who people feel comfortable with and others down there, makes it a little easier. To your point, how I saw it, is that's one of the things too where you can see these guys sort of fill it out get that balance because you're going to need you're going to need six guys up there the winner plus probably four others in the top 10 yeah. and then your sixth guy has to score or do something most likely as well so keep that in mind when you're building if you're going off of some of these big dogs up top but man our guy it, it, you know it's masters week when the football guys are all coming back double d we just saw juice earlier double d it says been hand building lineups in the factory today 75 done 75 to go lock button scotty Full fade, Rory, Windy Seat, 
Morikawa and Hovland and throwing them darts on Charles and Glover. Good luck. You good know, it's stuff, a good man. week when Hoop and Hoop and DD are on the same page. I'm considering doing very similar to what he's saying. So I love you like that. Windy uh, C, though. You like Windy C. I don't think I'm playing him to be honest with you. I was saying it deciding oh, between, between the two, between those two. Yeah, just oh, just yeah. between those two. Uh, I, he's going to be low on. I mean, he's definitely <laughs> going to be low on. Um, one point though that you brought up, which I think is very important to roster construction this week, and a lot of people are not going to talk about it, is the fact that you need guys to finish high here. If you're playing somebody in this field, I don't care what their price tag is, you need to be able to envision them finishing T. 15 maybe 18th at the worst like you can't play a guy just to make a cut here and uh you know have a 40 play finish and finish you're not winning shit like that you have to envision these guys getting definitely into the top 20 probably into the top 15 i think that's a very important point when um when talking about roster construction this week yeah and i'll show it real quick because we were at the top anyway it is a first thoughts more than a first look i think people enjoy this stuff more than just going through play by play by play all of that but just a note like Again, when you're trying to do something like a double stud, let's say you feel like it's a Scotty and Rory week and you feel comfortable with Denny and we showed off our value report over on shipitnation.com where Lee had Matt Fitzpatrick. So let's say you feel good about this. Well, you're closing out with 6,500 average. So you basically need these guys to all be the dudes, including Denny. And then you still need your last two. And then you can siphon in, siphon out who it ends up being. Shit, Denny can outdo Rory at some of these tournaments. So wouldn't surprise you if that happened. But just to say it, like you, you do have to think about these things when you're building and not just go off these narratives and all the other stuff. Obviously, it gets a lot easier if you take out one of those studs. So um, do want to say this, though, because what made me think about it was when DD brought that up. I would hold off, my friend, on the other seven just to make sure. Um, not like we're going to see some crazy... Uh, you know, the Masters is already pretty bunched. It's a smaller field, all that. But it does look like there's some pretty nasty weather. So we'll have to see how that shakes out. Again, too early for this. It's Monday. We'll wait and see. But just to note, I've seen a lot of people posting about that already. We'll have more on that as the week goes on. We always update it and post it out. Adam's like you, uh, thinking about that guy, Xander, man. Xander is the dude that you could definitely see him pull it off, right? It's You've been waiting for him. They keep saying when he gets his major, he gets all the, the talks about it. But he's always in the mix. He's sort of the... The opposite of Brooks, right? Where he's always in the mix, but he and he's good enough to be in the mix. He's not getting the the lucky side of it. We don't know if it's variance or not, but it's been a lot of close calls. And even recently, you talked about it, the fourth, second, and fifth at some of these bigger events at the Masters, tenth, third, and second in three of his last five years. He's been in the mix, so it's just a note to keep that in mind. But definitely a guy that's going to make sense. We always see him get a lot of love. I don't know if people are going to get to Neiman, even though they say they are. How? Like you've got Xander, you got Spieth, you got Oberg, you got Zal, you got Matsuyama. Like it's some, I don't know. We'll see if people get to Neiman at 96. I know some people said, how is he this price? Uh, it's hard to factor it in, right? He won a um, Asian World Tour event, uh, Mayakoba and Jedi on Liv. It's Liv stuff, but he got the invite. He's here. He's an incredible player. It just depends on how you see it going and how it playing out. He did um, finish 16th here last year, but no other really good major results in the past. So I can't see him getting a lot of ownership. I also wonder if people are just sort of done with Cantlay. It's been sort of a bad run here. Nothing crazy that we've seen out of him lately. Uh, you do go back though and look at it, you know, mid ups and downs here who 14th last year, but then a 39th and a missed cut before that it was a, a ninth at best. Like, I don't know if you can see people going there, but I think people always can get Spieth made a run yesterday too, by the way, a mini Rory run. I said on yeah. our discord, I said, Rory, Spieth and Connors, all going to make a bit of a run. It wasn't crazy as, as Rory for the other two, but of course they make a mini run just to keep them in your minds heading into the yeah. Masters. So it's certainly something. And then I think the bottom, you know, Matsuyama for sure, the guy that's popular. I don't know about starting a lineup. So what's your thoughts on this then? We'll go to the AKs after. But I said last week, I didn't like starting lineups. A lot of people are like, oh, I want to go a balanced Corey Connors lineup. And it's not results oriented. I said, there's a lot of guys above him where I said, I either like, going getting on like moving off him completely and getting a couple guys above him or making him the third guy in or i said from a roster construction perspective i want to go rory up top and then give me like fleetwood so my core last week was rory and fleetwood starting point lashley did enough to come through but the reason i liked that was because if i was going rory i didn't want to just have the standard Corey connor's next man up i wanted to pivot off the way people were using connor's as the second man in and so what's your thoughts on how people use Decky this week? Because you need six guys to be up there, like we said, but it feels more like Decky would be a second guy in 
for people when there's just all these dudes on top of them that we already just talked about. Any extra thoughts there? Yeah, roster control? yeah just initial thoughts. It's like, uh, you know, starting there, you know, maybe for like a cash game or something, you know, you want to just get uh, five, six, five solid guys, then one maybe cheaper. But for GPPs, man, you are really – fading a lot of guys with win upside like multiple guys with win upside so i agree with you i think hideki is more of a a second guy and even if you just go up to you know hideki and um yeah you use the example of xander which i like like you're gaining so much more overall win equity with your lineup by hideki being number two uh, opposed to number one. So some people will go the the ultra balance, start with guys like Hideki, then they'll probably come down and grab, I don't know, probably grab like a Tony Fino. Then you're still sitting at 8,100. And you can get a Matrick, Matthew Fitzpatrick at 79. You're still, you're back up to 82. And then what? Maybe you grab a Max Homa. Then you're still at 81. Feel good with the Gala. Then you're back up just 8,500. Cam Young, you have a full team of guys that look pretty solid. But, man, I just still think you're giving up too much win, equi uh, win equity by starting at 9K, especially in, in large field GPPs. Yeah, four of the top 10 last year, but just to know, four of the top five, if you count Rom. Rom wasn't over there yet, but it's a Rom at, yeah. it's Rom at a major, so I actually don't even think because it's, it's, it's Augusta National Golf Club, too. It's the other thing, right? It's, a, it's an event that that's why everybody's welcome and the guys that can go there. So just to keep that in mind, it was technically four of the top five. And then real quick, to Todd here, our guy, shout out to Todd Kyle. Good dude says, when you get to the 6,000 range, thoughts on the, as a punt to make the cut. Cut rules here are insane. I forget them off the top of my head, but at the end of the day, you don't need made cuts. You need you need a winner and four guys in the top 20 probably, at least, and maybe better than that. It's it's a limited field. Yeah. You got to get the guys up there, man. So like that's what I'm saying when you're punting off. This was an example to what Hoop and I just talked about. I don't hate something like this, Hoop. Double down. I don't know if it's going to be Decky or Xander, either of them, or, or sorry, or um, Zalatoris, but give me Xander as the buffer on top. And yeah, I get shorted a little bit from the Scotty Scheffler start, but I only have three spots to fill out. I can still probably get two of those four guys that people get with a Scotty Scheffler lineup and then one putt like theirs. And, and I, but I still have Zal, um, X, and Matsuyama. What if Scotty lineups and there's, you know, two or three of those um you know connor's fleetwood reed c Wu types roses if those guys don't come through that's going to be the problem um for those lineups again it's scotty can be in the mix and crushing but that can also crush said scotty lineup so just got to keep that stuff in mind when you're going about your roster construction don't hate that uh hovland's one other guy i will say early on to start the week that interests me a little bit remember coming into the season on an absolute tear we have not seen that as of late but again, if you're just looking at raw upside talent, majors, things like that, he's 25 to one in the betting markets too, still seventh year last year. I mean, he can find it around this place. It's just more of recent form versus whatever. But for a tournament play in there, I don't hate Victor Hobble. Let's move on. Let's go to this 8K range. And before we do, Hoop, um, the quick thought, Cam Smith, 8,900 with Matsuyama there. And then DJ, another live guy right below him. Live guy conversation first, and then other thoughts in this 8K range. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely looks like a drop off when you get here compared to the, the the range above, in my opinion. I mean, maybe people view it differently. You have Cam Smith at the top. We talked about a live guy um, withdrew last week from the live event. Uh, I think it was some sort of illness expected to be totally fine. How does that affect his ownership this week? Because people are going to talk about the the WD from the live event. Um, 8,900. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a Dustin Johnson guy. You know, I always play Dustin Johnson. I'll definitely play him here. Uh, 8,800, I think, is a totally fair price tag. Uh, you have the talking point with with Justin Thomas. Uh, started out the season on fire, slowed down a little bit. Now the split from from Bones. Like, what what's the mindset there? Like, I mean, I was loving Justin Thomas coming into the season. We were playing him at a very high rate. Uh, the results have kind of fallen off. The putter has been a disaster. Um, two missed cuts uh, in his last four, and then a 64th place finish. Um, got him. You know, he's a guy. I, I, let ownership really dictate what I do with guys all that often, but he's a guy I'll kind of be keeping an eye on this week. Like if he's going to come in low owned, like I think I'm going to get some of them, but if people do get excited to play him, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I come off him a little bit. Uh, Tony Finau uh, coming off the second at the Houston open. I mean, this course sets up very well for him. 
just all comes down to the putter. Like, can he make some putts? And it, it hasn't looked as bad. Like, the main main problem I have with Fino is just watching him putt. Like, it, it looks bad and awkward. It looks like he tweaked something. It looks a little bit better. Cam Young at 8,500. Uh, um, had the second-place finish at Valspar. Had a fourth at the Cognizant. Um, I, I always like kind of playing Cam Young. Morikawa seems absolutely broken to me. I mean, he seems like his game is just in disarray right now. 8400 probably the cheapest price we've seen on Morikawa in quite some time, but I will gladly be out on Morikawa. Uh, Max Homa, 83, another guy that really, I, don't know, I think probably similar to like Hovland, uh, just really hasn't gotten it going this year whatsoever. Um, but you're getting, what is it, Hovland's 9,500 and, and uh, Homa's 8,300. Homa is lower than the average roster spot on DraftKings. Um, so I think that's somewhat interesting. Bryson, big talking point for Bryson. He's been playing very well. Um, you know, he, he's coming to a place uh, that uh, everyone else is playing, what, par 72, and he's playing par 68. Um, you know, I think he's humbled himself, though, a little bit. You know, it seems like it, it's hard to really – gauge where he's at mentally because he's not on the PGA tour anymore. But some of the stuff I've seen, some of the stuff I've read seems like he's changed a little bit in that uh, demeanor in that way, Sam Burns, and then uh, Shane Lowry, you know, really no strong opinions early on in the week on, in those, on those guys. Um, but certainly is an interesting range. Um, you know, Cam Smith, I, I think has a chance to go like a little bit overlooked. I'm curious to see what happens with JT and then uh, I will just gladly pass on Morikawa. Like, I, I think he, he he should be, like, in the 7K range based on how he's played uh, lately. Yeah, I'll go into it in a second there. I did just notice one thing, so we'll take two seconds here. I'm just going to do this. Watch this. Just starting now. Click. Boom. That took, like, a second and a half. If you're on your phone, click. Boom. Took about less than a second. If you haven't hit the like button yet, please do so. Almost 200 people watching on a Monday First Thoughts show. We appreciate you all, but do us that favor when you come in and support the show. It's free to do. Hit the like button. It helps us out a ton. Want to keep growing the channel. Of course, if you guys haven't yet subscribed to the Ship It Nation YouTube station, do so now. Going to do a bunch more content coming out. we got a lot of good things going on. Some big announcements coming up soon as well. So we appreciate you, but just show that back. Give us that one second. Like, uh, what's the show? Oh, yeah. Um, it's called, uh, what's the one called? The My First Million. Great pod. They call it the Gentleman's Agreement, and I like that. We don't know who's clicking it or who is actually clicking it, but we we do know it's free and only takes two seconds or less, regardless what device you're on. So just take that two seconds. Help us out. We do appreciate it, guys. But I think you're right, Hoop. It is hard to make a case for these 8K guys, right? Like, even if you like Cam Smith or DJ, it's sort of a thought. Okay, I'll use one of them. It's no different than if you're using Brooks or if you're using Neiman. Pricing matters, yes. I more so am saying that if you're going to that range and making your stand, it's your guy. It's your live guy. JT, the caddy stuff, I wonder how that affects his ownership. Finau, pretty good track record here. That would be a reason to go to him. Cam Young, people are going to look at what is he? what have you done for me lately and go to Cam Young, and I think they'll be okay with it. Second, fourth, 16th, eighth, third. I mean, this is all in the last couple of months, and then he did have a seventh here last year. I wonder how people treat the Morikawa one, though, because a uh, two-time major winner, basically the average price, and he's got great, you know, last two years have been awesome here. I think it's a, a seventh and a tenth or a fifth and a tenth at this course. So whether or not he can actually show up, but he had a bad week last week. People don't really love Homa. Brooke, uh, Bryson, it's again, you're either a Bryson guy or you're not. I don't know here, but I guess Lowry would be like the thousand dollar less Hideki, right? Like people are just going to play Lowry. He, he's got a 16th, third, 21st, and a 25th here. So four straight top 25s and really the third and the 16th are much better than the top 20s he had before that. And then recently, 29th, 19th, third, and fourth at some pretty strong tournaments and strong fields. So you got to think Lowry just becomes that guy. And I wonder what that looks like. If it's Lowry at 8K, Hideki at 9K, even if people get their McCarthy on and then go back up to their Scotty, yeah, you still got 7,300. Like I, I can see this being a very popular build, right? You can get to this pretty easily. And we're about to get into the 7K range, but I don't need to fill it out for you. Whether you're up at the top around Thigala, whether you're just balancing it out with a Connors or a Fleetwood, and then whoever you land on, there's all these guys here. Akshay just got put into the mix, too, off of a win. Jaeger won the week before that. I mean, there's lots of guys here that I could see people going to. So the AK range is interesting. I do wonder quick what Scotty, who are the two guys you liked in here? Lowry and one more? Uh, I liked, uh, yeah, DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, they don't have to love them. I'm just saying, like, this is an example, but. Yeah. If you go Scotty and then drop down and try and, you know, 
say, look, if I'm going, Scotty, that is my win equity up top. He's four to one to win this thing on a, at a Masters, coming in off two wins at a second place, where one of the wins he was getting neck, um, you know, fixed up halfway through, and then the other one he played like shit throughout. I, I thought he played better than people. I, I did give him credit. Uh, I guess I said I discredited others that said he didn't actually play that good. I actually thought he played really well and showed off some of his around the green game chops that we've seen so well, even the year here against Cam Smith. When uh, the turning point for Scotty on that Sunday was that chip in off uh, two or three. I can't remember what it was. And I was just like, oh, Scotty isn't actually out of this thing. He's right there. And then he goes on to win it. But just of note, if you start with two 8K guys, even if you could talk yourself into Fina because of his history, this is probably a better way to show it. You do still have 7,100. So I think that just the thought process from that, you know, this would be a way to go hoop where you don't feel as bad about missing out on the 9K guys, right? Versus... Let's see here. If you yeah. go to Hideki as second guy in, you're almost in the same spot. If you go to Xander as a second guy in, you're almost in the same spot. But in that previous version I just showed, you have three golfers to select versus two. So I guess it's really tough. If you can sell yourself on some of those 8K guys being the same or as good as those 9K guys, I think there was somebody up here before who said that. Um, Lance, 9K range to me is, is overpriced other than Oberg and Decky. So if you feel that way, and that's fine, it's everyone teach their own. I think that's a good call. If you feel that way, then that's you shouldn't have a problem with what I just talked about and still be able to take your, your choice of Scotty or whoever you like up top and fill it out with some of those 8K guys because that's the way to do it. Or you can also flip it and go with the two studs up top knowing that you're going to have to push that stuff down the bottom. Maura Cowher should be relegated to Corn Ferry. So, agree. Uh, you know, that, that's Hoops Thoughts as well. There you go. $8,400. I, I made fun of Kenny on the Fantasy Golf Degenerates podcast there. We recorded Friday because I remember a while ago, he said, you just play Rory, or sorry, you just play Rom and Morikawa at all the majors and you'll do you'll do all right. Xander fits into that mix as well. If you go Rom, Xander, Morikawa, eh, you're getting there. You probably don't have it all, but he did say Rom and Morikawa. That's the Scotty Scheffler money. And it's then deciding between Colin Morikawa and the 7K guy. Let's talk about that hoop because we're going to segue into that 7K range anyway. So uh, who are some of the 7K guys? It's the best way to put it. Who are some of the 7K guys you would take over Morikawa? That's the best way to start this range. The question might be who wouldn't I take over Morikawa, to be honest with you. Like, I am that low on Morikawa. Like, he, he's probably, like, the easiest X out for me in a while. Like, I, I just can't do it. I mean, Fitzpatrick right at the top, um, you know, you kind of showed it off in the, um, you know, value rankings from our guy Lee. Lee's on him, and he's been playing well. I mean, had the one miscut at the Arnold Palmer, but what they found that, yeah, everyone's talked about it a million times. I hate to even bring it up, but they found the extra weight in his driver and his changes get blown. I don't give a shit about that stuff. I just know he's been playing a hell of a lot better lately. Fifth at the players. 10th last week. And he's another guy that you can kind of throw into the Rory conversation where, you know, made a run on Sunday or played well on Sunday to move up the leaderboard to entice us a little bit more. 7,900 um, is a fair price for him. I mean, he's a guy in the 7K range that I can say it, he's live to win this event. All right. I think there's, I don't know, maybe 15 to 20 guys that I think could win this event. I think he's one of them. Harmon at 7,800. It's a good price tag for him. People like playing him. Uh, I think Thigala is an interesting name here. Uh, been playing well. Where did he finish last year? He was up there, right, last year? Yeah, he finished ninth last year uh, at the Masters. And, you know, the one thing about Augusta, you want someone that has experience here. He has experience. He had success. We always talk about him in, like, a boomer bust nature, which is, is typically true. Um, but you know, this is a week I think I, I want to be on the gal, and I don't play a lot of him. Sung Jay I'll let you talk about him, like, yeah, I'm not playing his ass. Um, but then the like the next three on this pricing spectrum are, are guys that I think get the most ownership probably in this range Hatton, Fleetwood, Connors. And these are all guys that you look at and you look at their price tag, and you could easily, I, I say, in my opinion, you can easily see all three of these guys with their price. Price is starting at eight instead of seven. I could see these guys in the 8K range. Hatton, Fleetwood, Connors, three guys that, uh, you know, I think have a chance to, to finish high up on this leaderboard. Connors uh, has always played well here. 7,500 for him, 75 for Fleetwood, 76 for Hatton. I think all get a, a decent chunk of ownership. Um, and then a lot of question marks pop up. Tom Kim, 
Um, seems to be completely broken. I mean, he's had nothing at all this season. Missed the cut last week. Another guy that's probably very low owned. So if you like Tom Kim, you're going to get him at low ownership. Patrick Reed at 74, you know the story. He, he typically plays well here. Not sure what I'm going to do with him. Min Wu, Fowler, Justin Rose, three guys with, with big time question marks in, in my eyes. You know, Fowler's a guy that people just like playing. But, man, he sucks right now. He had the nice run last year to kind of, you know, turn his career around a little bit after struggling. Struggled, got better last year. Now he's falling off a cliff again. Uh, then you get to the bottom of this range, and I think this is where another chunk of ownership comes from. So I think in this range you're going to see a lot of guys go to that middle sevens with Hat and Fleetwood Connors, or they're going to come down to Henley, Batia, who just continues to play well. We talked about it on the show last week, and it held true. Batia's finishes – this year have been phenomenal. He's had some missed cuts, but when he makes the cut, he plays well. Well, sure as shit, made the cut and won the, the freaking thing last week, and it wasn't a sweat. Adam Scott at 7,100. People are definitely going to like that. Steven Yeager playing well at 71. So I think we we see you know ownership in, in chunks in this range. You're going to get some of those people at the top, like Fleet, or, uh, Fitzpatrick with some ownership, probably Harmon. Going to come down to that middle range, Hat and Fleetwood Connors, and then there's going to be a lot of interest in the bottom. Uh, I did mention Henley, but Henley finished, what, uh, fourth here, tied for fourth last year. So uh, a lot of people would be excited to play him. So it's a, a strong range for sure. Ever since the Mayo mistake, I'll call it, uh, the blunder there in my ranking, I always want to get somebody else. So let me try and hit you with four right quick in this range to rank them. These are the four. You mentioned the three. Hatton, Fleetwood, Connors, but I'm going to add in Henley. So Hatton, Fleetwood, Connors, Henley. How would you rank those four? Man, you're, you're trying to you're, you're trying to have me one up you from the the Mayo show, aren't you? No, you know how to you know how to slow down. <laughs> three you talked about Hat and Fleetwood. Yeah, when you factor when you factor in salary for me, it's gonna go it's gonna go uh, uh, Connors, Henley, um, right? Fleetwood, Con Hatton. Connors, Henley. Yeah, I'll say Fleetwood, Hatton in in that order. Yeah. Yep. See, I'm a good I'm a good host. I'm helping you out. I'll get you guide you through it. I won't let you embarrass yourself. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Connors and Hatton probably make sense. I guess people are having a hard time. We talked about it in the Discord this morning. We were just going through some stuff and last night, and people don't seem to like Hatton, even though a, a good result at Live Golf Miami. I don't think that's why people give a shit. It's just interesting that here, 34th, 52nd, 18th, missed cut, 50s, he hasn't been able to find it, and he gets frustrated very quickly, man. We know this. Like If it's not yeah. going his way, he's out. But it is long-term that, uh, you know, He's been in the mix at some other bigger events. And if you take him back and the price then seems like it is a bit light. So good point by Ross. His caddy got injured. So it's his buddy that he's bringing out. Hugo Dobson, by the way, who was with him on the bag in 2019 for a beautiful finish of 56th place. His worst finish at the Masters outside of the miscuts. So not sure if that matters either, but just a note on old Tyrrell Hatton. That's a quick note on him as well. Uh, he does have a different caddy. It's his friend. Should feel comfortable around him. He was already with them in 19. Lots of experience here. But some of those guys who that you mentioned, you can mix them in. It's just you got to realize how you're playing your full lineups. But I think in general, um, I'll get to I'll save Song Jay, but Connors, 10th, 8th, and 6th. Uh, Patrick Reed, 4th, 8th, 10th, 35th, 1st. I mean, he's got all kinds of history here and played well. Fowler, when he, I mean, he's back this year, but when he's played it in the past, 29th, 9th, 2nd, 11th, 12th, 5th, crushes. Henley, 4th, 30th, gap of not playing, 15th, 11th. You go down to uh, one other guy, or maybe it was at the top, Fitzpatrick. Never missed a cut since back in, what was it, 2014? I'm not even sure if that was his year playing as an amateur, but just to look at it, you go to Fitzpatrick, and he's got the finishes here that are all pretty solid, too. If you look, 10th, 14th. He has a 7th, the 21st in there, but the most recent are 10th and 14th. And Thigala, who you mentioned, maybe boom bust, but is also a made cut guy. But is in his made cuts, a lot of them, fifth, sixth, ninth. At the same tournaments, Scotty won at, and Wyndham Clark finished second. Drop all the way down to 7,700, and you get the guy who finished sixth and ninth. Very consistent at similar tournaments where you'd expect Scotty to play well here again, and then ninth here last year. So I might like Thigala in that mix as a guy that stands out. I think our guy Lee likes him as well. If you go check out the value report at shipitnation.com, that's certainly something you could do. We'll get to the 6K range in a minute, but want to remind everyone very quickly, if you haven't yet done so, go over to shipitnation.com, join the nation. If you just want in on PGA only, you can get in on it here. We've got the weekly 
to try it out for the Masters. You will not get into the Discord if you've been looking for a place to find home, a community you can surround yourself with, like-minded individuals, similar goals and mindsets, maybe help you skip some of the mistakes we and others made along the way and start getting better at finding out about getting into satellites and how you handle them and roster construction for certain ter- certain types of tournaments, all that stuff. That's what the Discord importance is. If you get the monthly right now with the code HOOP15, I'll throw it up in a minute. It drops to $33 or just around a dollar a day. You get all of the content for the main slate, showdown, all the stuff that we talked about already, the education course, and you do get into that Discord. It's worth a try. Every time I'm selling you on this, it feels like we're talking about something that's a thousand bucks. It's $33. You're probably playing a $20 single entry this week or something like that or whatever it might be. Trust me, try this thing out. You don't like it. You can cancel any time. The annual is $299, drops down to $254. It works out to about $5 per event. So if you guys want to get in, go to the site now, shipitnation.com, use Hoop15. This is the week to do it, to get in on it for the Masters. Hoop, let's go to this 6K range. Let's not go crazy on it because we'll be back Wednesday with final thoughts. I think that's part of the tease, having it saved. I know our guy b is giving away a monthly all-access membership, so we'll have that. On Wednesday, we'll have a bunch of other giveaways. I'll have some of those winners announced for the $500 Millie Maker tickets I'm going to give away. Again, you have to retweet or repost the tidbits if that's the case. And then I saw two in here. Where did he go? Uh, one more, and then we'll go to the 68. Shout out to LJL Coin. Shiva Nation community is crushing. He, he's the one first yesterday for T1, 7500 bucks in one of the bigger yeah. tournaments there this week. And he's going to do a giveaway as well. He's just going to hit me up over chat today and let me know what it's going to be. So you'll want to come back Wednesday. I think we're going to be recording it at 2.30 Eastern as usual. And we'll be breaking it all down, have some more news, do some giveaways, have some fun. But who who are just a few guys in that 6K range early on? First thoughts that stand out to you. Yeah. um, Pavon Kirk at the top, I think, uh, are potential plays. You know, I I said Morikawa is probably the, the easiest fade for me. Uh, on the slate like if you like money the second name you should eliminate from your player pool is the man that you just pulled up on the screen I already know. that is that is tiger woods just get him out of there don't even tempt yourself with it just fade him and, and move on it's like the easiest thing you could do this week to you know potentially increase your uh your winnings like just don't do it um sergio coming off the t2 do people go to him uh, keegan bradley's a name down here that looks like you know he could be a little bit more expensive hasn't been playing well 67 um stands out a little bit um coming down rio has played well this year taylor moore continues to uh make cuts and he finished obviously uh what second at that uh, houston open 6400 Ekro, uh, lucas glover uh denny mccarthy like you talked about adam shank it's playable guys down here there definitely is playable guys um, but you know, the main point for me, when I come down to the 6k range, like you said, we're going to talk about it more in depth, uh, throughout the week in discord. And then on the show on, uh, on Wednesday, but man, you really need to envision these guys having a high end finish. You can't play guys down here just to make the cut. It's going to do you no good in GPPs. If you're playing cash games, yeah, you can change that mentality a little bit, but for tournaments this week, a made cut is not good enough. You need to envision these guys getting top 20 top 15 uh you need that sort of upside from these guys so um that's just a one point but yeah like you said we'll we'll cover it more here throughout the week and definitely more on uh, wednesday yeah and our guy rin is just taking this one on the rin taking it on the chin sorry buddy eric yeah. van royen <laughs> look at this try breaking 70 buddy my goodness yeah. 71 72 73 72 74 71 76 70 like come on this guy get this guy out of here and we'll see where he lands in the course fit rankings but yeah there's definitely guys down here. Shout out to Nick. This is insane. It's not just ship it. I know he gets all kinds. He said, sip it. <laughs> I like that one too. We'll use that somewhere. <laughs> but uh, Nick just absolutely dominated the betting market this way. And hoop, he's a hashtag receipts guy. He had Akshay to win 16,000 and he's in the playoff. He doesn't hedge at all. He's just not his style of play. hundred percent of a guy. Nick's awesome. Goes in on this stuff. And then he sends me a ticket and goes, oh yeah, by the way, there's a playoff going on on live right now too. And I'm like, who gives a shit? He's like, oh, because I got Dean Burmeester to win 65 more hundred. So the guy stacked up like 23 grand across these two bets on top of everything else. He had a great showdown week. I think one of the slates there, he was way up the board and ended up finishing fifth 
or something, but it was still very solid for our guy yeah. Nick. So our crew, him. our our crew has the receipts. We back them up. Like, man, like I can't imagine posting it outright. So, oh my gosh, I hit the winner this week. Like I hit the winner. Look at look at look at my tweet, and then not actually proving that I hit the freaking winner. Like it's just uh sad, sad stuff. But uh, our crew, that's not that's not how we roll. Yeah, rent free, baby. My, Mike Renta. Mike Pettis' brother living rent free in a lot of heads up there. <laughs> that, is better, that is honestly one of the better feelings in life. Honestly, like when you know you are stuck in someone's head and they think about you every day and they are willing to go onto social media and, and post like underlying messages about you, and you just know, you know, you've won and you're just living up here, man. And it costs you nothing. Such a great feeling. Yeah. The 6K range for me, just a couple other guys to mention it. Like, uh, you know, a bunch of guys down here, but to your point, it's kind of like whatever you settle on. I kind of like Rio, I think, early on, first thoughts. But it, it's yeah. whatever you settle on, you can't get away with much. Like, I know people would say, like, okay, I already like Denny because he's cheap. Let's just use him as the example still. And I feel good about Rio. Well, then, yeah, it's awesome that you have 9350 to fill it out. That's the best part, for sure. But you really got to peg that you basically have to have, like, a top 10 parlay with the winner for the other four. So you got to get that right. That would pay pretty good in the betting markets too, by the way. But then you need one of these two guys to be the guy who also comes through. And then you need the other one to probably not lag too far behind. So definitely we'll have builds like this. I'm just explaining like, again, if you go like this, you probably want to commit to it for the guys you have down low. So a smaller pool to run through them. And then you want to be able to commit to getting some differences up top. Because if your four game parlay up here of your other four dudes is aren't the dudes that you need for the week, and these two don't come through, at least one of them really comes through, you're probably not going to be in the mix. It's just the way it works at the Masters with the limited field, with everything else that goes through it. So definitely got to keep that in mind. Like I said, we'll save the other 6K guys. We're at the hour mark. We'll definitely be back Wednesday. We'll break it all down for you. That was kind of the, the general first thoughts we wanted to go through with you here, but we'll answer more questions on Wednesday. We'll have more announcements. We'll have more giveaways. We'll have all of that covered. There is a contest over on... See if I can pull it up here quick right now, Hoop, just because it's a big one. There's another big one coming on Wednesday as well. I love the marketing stuff we do and innovate off of other sites and things like that that people are doing. But uh, just to go over here, let's go. Ship it nation. Let's scroll down. If you guys didn't see this yet, you'll want to get in on this contest for sure. It's very easy to do. A lot of fun. Got some tweets out there. We had a good weekend. That's how you know. But this one. So big time majors contest. We started it off. Uh, it's getting out there now. I think there's been, yeah, 110 comments. 49 people have quoted it. It's one or the other. But just to break it down, very easy to enter. You go to the Ship It Nation X or Twitter account, whatever you want to call it. You like this post. You follow us at Ship It Nation. And then you reply or quote this with your 2024 major winners. You can even copy and paste or just post them out there. After the majors, we're going to give away a $2.99 annual membership to whoever picks the winner. If you all pick Scotty and he wins, you'll go in a random entrant draw for the Scotty winners. If you pick a contrarian pick and you're the only one with them, you win automatically if they win. So just note that we're giving that away. And then people think, oh, you post these contests, people never follow up on them. I put a reminder in my phone to handle it so that it'll make sure it will get done. I, the can, Monday attest after. You guys know I can attest to the fact that Tambo is tracking every single one of these giveaways and we pay out every single one of these giveaways. Oh, sure. That is a guarantee, and I can also uh, I can also guarantee you other spots. That is not the case, and you are correct. Whoever said that statement, because that is true. But here, much different story. Promise you that. Yeah, triple T guarantee. You're gonna get your payouts. Don't worry. So make sure you guys follow this. The second one was an all access, which when we get there will be six ninety nine with whatever the coupon code is. But somebody, whoever gets the most. Masters winners correct, and then if it's everybody, the the most anyone gets is two, and there's ten people that got two. It'll be a draw out of those ten people, and it doesn't matter if you're a member already; it just gets stacked on to your account. Everything else will get prorated. The dates will get added on. You'll be good to go. So it's anybody, whether you're a Ship It Nation member or not, you can get in on the action for this contest. I think that's gonna do it for this one. Hoop, any final thoughts before we get out of here? Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a home for some Masters content this week, I mean, there is nowhere else you need to look. I mean, we always talk about it uh, on these shows, on Twitter. Like, one of our mottos that we stick to is pay less for content, play more contests. If there's ever a week where I wanted to play more contests, it was th it's this week because those, those Masters contests are 
massive. And a few extra dollars can go a long way with these contests that they're offering up, especially on DraftKings this week. So if you're looking for a spot, you come to us, you're going to pay a hell of a lot less for the, your content. You're going to be able to play more contests this week. And that's what we're all about. Good question. We never thought about this one, Nick. If somebody gets the top 10, yeah. I was going to say, if you even pick all four major winners correct, then yeah, yeah. there'd be a bigger price for sure. I'll take care yeah. of you on that one. You could keep me down yeah. for that. I don't want to commit, but I don't know what it would be. Yeah. But uh, we'll definitely say that if you pick all four correct, we'll get you set up. But like Hoop said, try it out for a week. No code works on that. It's 14 bucks. Try it or don't. It's two bucks a day. It wraps to the next week. So if you get all the stuff for this week, you get all the stuff for next week uh, up to this date. So if Monday we've got the course fit rankings out and all that, you'll still get that, but it will end Monday evening once you sign up for that. The monthly, 33 bucks with code hoop15, 254 for the annual, which is 12 months. It's not just till the end of this season at the end of August. It's going to be till the end of this year, next year. So you'll get right through till the Masters next year. So if you're waiting around, use code hoop15. The prices for the all access, this applies to as well. That's going to do it for this one, guys. For Hoop, for myself, Toe Tag and Tambo, let's ship it.